position. I do change the focus. Can't I, can't, I can't put his tail down because this one's grabbing my finger. Back step. I listen to Anna. You should. Listen Are they to done? Oh, there's Dean. Yeah, I'm not in prison. Using the strong okay, decision. Okay, no claws, piggy. Scene, you're wrong. The strong decision is to take away his power over you. Oh, you're filming it. <laughs> Get on with your life. How could I not? They're goofy. We're done now. I wonder if you're right. I am right. Okay, I'll stop it now. Let me see. No, just a minute. You're not going to believe it. She's pregnant again. No. She's been arrested for treason. Not quite. She's back with Bertie. Okie dokie. Where did we say this guy goes? I'm going to sleeve that. I don't want to replace it. I want to sleeve it. This goes to the oscillator coil. It says I've got it labeled as number four. Did I write a number four on here? Ah, there it is. I wrote a number four right there. A little hard to see, but uh, that's the terminal I want to put this guy to. So let me get that thing sleeved first before I do it. So this green goes with that green. Um, I don't have to go too long on this. Let's sleeve it to about there. Now I know this is going to number four. Okay. The sleeving sometimes even enhances the color, but it certainly protects the, the wire and keeps it from shorting. And I kind of twist it as I'm putting it on. It helps it slide up the wire better. There we go. And then I'll, I'll heat it to shrink it, but also it makes it a little more flexible when it's still warm so I can get it in position and it'll hold it, help hold it in position once it cools off. And then you just kind of gently roll it over to where you want it to be. Probably better not to go across the coil though. Since all the other wires are coming in radially, it would make sense that I maybe want to do this one that way too. While I am waiting for the soldering iron, I just decided, since this is sitting right up against that aluminum shield, put just a little more of this on there. I gotta be careful with that. This is solid core wire. I bend it too many times, it's going to break. Alright, get this up here in position. Easy does it, so you don't break that wire. It's not like you got a lot of spare wire to mess with. careful with these coil terminals and try not to get them too hot for too long you don't want to really be melting that wax if they're coated with wax or even if they're not you don't want to be getting them too hot so you don't have to get too crazy about making that real tight wrapping it around either what you do want to do is uh, make sure it's it's soldered nice and securely okay one wire down two to go Okay, this one is labeled number five, and it goes on the antenna coil right there. I have a number five there. It says from the from the tuning condenser. So number five, that just landed in just the right spot, guys. Slip that off. Again, I like. I'm going to sleeve these rather than replace these wires. They're in good shape, but I do want to protect them some because the insulation is is getting old and tired. It's not terribly critical. It would be fine if you didn't do it. It's just something I like to do because um, I never know, you know, exactly what that wire is going to see. Real quick, don't do it long. Take this, very gently come around. Pinch it together just a hair. 
there we go okay that's tight enough get a little solder on that guy I won't have to heat it as long if I put some some flux on it so that's what I'm gonna do just a tiny bit I know there's lots of people that hate all this flux people use flux but truth is it makes soldering easier and it makes you apply heat for less time and that those those are both good things since I do like to use flux I have to clean it off when I'm done then there's this wire right here that's the third wire to come through the holes or you know down from the tuning condenser let's see where it goes this thing goes to number six pin six on the six f seven okay this is the six f seven right here so it needs to go to pin six on that tube I forgot about that that's way up here Seven. Okay, so pin six is right here with this red. All three wires are connected from the uh, tuning condenser. We are golden. All right, it's time for me to quit tonight. I was trying to find a resistor that shows up on the schematic as a 250K resistor, and I haven't been able to find it. And here's why. Let me show you the resistor first. If you look down here at the simplified diagram, you see that 250K right there? Okay, that connects to the secondary of the second IF transformer, and it connects to the cathode of the 75 tube. Okay, so if you measure across, say, this point right here and this point right here, um, you should, you can reasonably expect to get somewhere in the neighborhood of 250K or a little less if there, this goes off and there's some parallel thing going on. Okay, but it should be somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, and what I am finding when I actually do the measurement, it just so happens that, that the cathode uh, point would connect right here. Okay. This is the wire going off to the cathode, that pin number five. So it would connect right to this point right here. And then this connects to that secondary on the, uh, on the IF transformer, okay? So there is essentially that connection. I've gone ahead and plucked out this, uh, this uh, 100, I'm sorry, this 250 picofarad cap, which is right here, okay? So I plucked this out. I've disconnected this wire right here going off to here. And so really, when I measure from here to here, I should, if there might be some stuff, again, going down through this wire here, but I should get real close to 250K right here. Um, so let's just see. And what do I measure? I measure 350, 300, about 355K, 354K. So I'm about 100K up on this, which is not good. That's a little too high for my taste. Now, I was trying to find this resistor, and I was not able to find it anywhere. Um, I looked all over, and then I looked up here at the schematic, and I started looking. If I look at the parts diagram, or the, the parts list, I see that the uh, 250 ohm carbon resistor is part number 23998, okay? And they use six of them in this, in this uh, particular circuit. So I thought I'd come over here and start looking for them and start counting them. If I look right over here, it looks like 23998, and there's three of them right there. And then here's another one right somewhere in here. So I'm not sure. It's, 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 it's underneath this support bar. Why they drew it that way, I'm not sure. So there's four of them right away. And let's see here. Well, there's another one right there. Two, three, nine, nine, eight points of that resistor. I got those all covered in the in the the circuit. I'm good. There's still one missing. Um, well, that's because if I look really close, that two, three, nine, nine, eight resistor is inside the shield of this IF transformer, which can only mean if I want to fix that 100 k ohm um, drifted upward. If I want to fix that, I've got to pull this transformer off the sh out of the shield or the shield off the transformer, whichever way it works. So I think I'm going to have to 
go ahead and take this apart. And I hate that idea, but I need to do it because 354K uh, is way off of 250K. So um, here we go. This is our next step and our next challenge in the project. Let's get to it, okay? It should be fairly straightforward, except that I've got some wires to get out of the way. Now, it's going to be easy to remember that these go here, but what I'm going to do is make a little red mark. See, these are all B+, plus, okay? So I'm just going to go ahead and mark B+, plus there, because that'll be useful later, too. All right? Uh, there are no other wires to disconnect except for those, so I'm, I'm pretty good there. Let me get this cap a little bit out of the way, and let me lift these screws off of these... Uh, these posts. Let's see what happens. Who knows? Who knows? Might be easy. I just don't know. Um, it might lift off of there with no trouble at all. I kind of doubt it though. Let's see what moves. I'm not quite sure how this is going to work and how it's connected. So there should only be like four connections to each of these. Now you'll notice there's something tricky about these IF transformers in this particular radio and I'll show you that here in just a second. Alright, you see that yellow wire there, right? Okay, that goes right into the IF transformer. So I've got to disconnect it from that tube socket there if I'm going to lift, if I'm going to have any hope of getting this out. And that might have to slide through the shield. I'm pretty sure it will, which will make it real fun getting it back in. So we'll see what happens. Um, hopefully I can lift the whole shebang off of there and then disassemble it on the bench. But I just don't know. Let's take a look at it, okay? Oh yeah! Remember, the IF transformer shields are riveted to the chassis. So that means the IF transformers have to come out of the shields, which means that uh, that wire has to come out of the shield too. So let's just, uh, let's just take a look. I have thought of another approach. If I put a resistor in parallel across here that makes that drifted resistor and the new resistor together come to about 250K, that might be another approach. And I might do this, do that if this gets nasty. Let's just see what happens when I try to get this free. Yikes. Okay. First casualty. I've got a broken little disc here, but that's not a big deal, I suppose. But I can already see. I'm going to, I don't know how I'm going to get that wire through here. I'm going to have to lift that wire out. Lift this terminal off of here. And then I'll probably break this other one too. But a spacer washer or a little plastic washer will work just fine here. I'm not worried about that. Just needs to be an insulating washer. All right. There we go. That one broke too. So far, so good, guys, huh? Now, let me see if this thing is free to move a little bit. It kind of looks that way, but it looks like it would break, too, if I'm not really careful. Nope. Okay. I don't know if that's going to come apart. I'm real worried about that. Let's get some wires free. Well, for better or for worse, I got that bottom one loose. It's going to be a real trip putting it back. Geez, I hope that all these bad, these crummy solder joints, I, I remember earlier in the vid I said I was going to have to rework these anyway, so I guess this isn't the end of the world, but I hope that these solder joints weren't done by Grunau, because I always had a higher opinion of Grunau's uh, quality than I've been seeing in this radio. I don't know, maybe this was just a real low cost radio, maybe the Grunau had somebody build it for him, who knows. Alright, let's see if we can lift this off of here safely. I don't know. I never had one of these apart before. Not this brand, I mean. I don't think it. there's any speed cap wire. Oh. oh boy. These wires here go through that too. And I'm thinking I'm going to parallel resistor that and make that work from the outside because this is just going to be a nightmare. So let me show you what I'm proposing, guys. Let me do that in video here. Or let me do that with my little camera here. Alright, so what I am proposing, this is supposed to be 250K. Alright, 
it's important because I think it, it's going to affect the biasing right here of, of this tube. But in any event, this needs to be 250K. But right now, it's sitting at about 355K. What if I put a resistor right in parallel? Okay. Right here. Okay. Such that the two resistors in parallel add up to 250K. Effectively, electrically, it should be the same unless there's something I'm missing in terms of what might be happening with that resistor. Is it going to degrade further or whatever? I'll do the math. I'll figure out what the resistance is that would do that. All right, so the parallel resistance formula is this. R parallel equals 1 over this mess of 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus dot, 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 1 over whatever number of resistors there are, okay? In my case, I know RP. I know that should be 250K. I'll leave the K off of there so I'm not messing with the zeros. Okay, I got 1 over 1 over 354 plus 1 over R2. I want to figure out what R2 is. 1 over 354 plus 1 over R2 equals 1 over 250. 1 over R2 equals 1 over 250 minus 1 minus 1 over 354. Let me get out my college friend. All right. So, 1, enter, 250, divide. Okay, 1, enter, 354, divide, minus. Okay, so 1 over R2 equals 1.18, all right, times 10 to the negative 3. Okay, there we go. Now, what is R2 equals? Equals R2 equals 1 over that, right? Makes sense, right? So all we have to do here is inverse that, and we're, we got the number. 850.96 ohms. Let me see. 850. 0.96k. So let's just see what happens if we get something in that neighborhood and hook it up and, and check it out, okay? Okay, I don't have an 850k, all right? But I do have an 820k, which will get me in the ballpark. Let me just see what happens if I do this. Um, this is squirrely, guys. I'm going to try it and we'll see what see how it comes out, okay? Now, let's see what we get for a uh, p total parallel resistance. Yikes. Wires everywhere, man. Connect this up to there. And this up to there. And hot dog, look at that, guys. 248 point, eh, roughly 248 ohms, K ohms. 248K. My book says that's pretty damn close to 250K, and I should go ahead and do this rather than risk tearing that thing apart. And if it doesn't work, then I pull it back out and tear that apart. But if it does work, then I'm golden and I haven't torn it apart. I think it's too risky tearing into this if I don't need to. I think it's probably an old dog bone resistor in there that's drifted high. It's not likely to drift much higher. Let's leave it be. Because you take this parallel resistance out of there, and bango, you got 354. That's not good. So uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and proceed with installing this. If it doesn't work well, I've learned something, okay? And uh, you you know you'll, I'll be done with it by the time you see this video. But what the hell? If you see uh, in problems in my logic, just let me know, man. Because I don't have an ego in this game. I just want to learn. All right, let me let me get going on it. Okie dokie, guys. Well. Guess what? Shame on me. Uh, I did a bad. Um, and what am I talking about? Well, as you can see, I kind of worked ahead. Um, <laughs> this chassis is so stinking hard to do with the camera right over my shoulder that I finally just kind of gave up and said, I'm going to show you how, I, how the progress I made. 
because I just I just couldn't I couldn't do it. It was just too hard to work on uh, with the camera. So hopefully I showed you enough of what's going on so that you uh, uh, you can gather it. As you know, we we mounted this tuning condenser and we went ahead and and uh, fixed her up so that it would turn smoothly. So that part you got in the last video, so we're cool there. Uh, where we left off, I believe, was uh, on setting this speaker up, and that's just because it was so tight, and I may not have even shown you any of that. I've got to, I'll review the video. This, it was so tight that putting this speaker on with the camera on um, was uh, just a nightmare. And on top of all of that, after all the lecturing I did for you guys, about not putting your meat hook through a speaker. Uh, sure enough, there are going to be 10 or 12 of you that are going to say, I told you so, because I was trying to get this thing, actually, I was cutting a cover for this when I, my hand slipped and my thumb went right into the cone. So I, have to, I had to fix the cone, but it's no big deal. It's already fixed. I went ahead and wired up the output transformer and the field coil wires, so we're good there. Pretty much everything is connected, and as you see, I've got tubes on there because what we're going to do in a few minutes and give this is to give this a first power up. Um, I've not done anything as far as alignment goes or anything on this radio. All I've done is uh, put the stuff on it and hope it works. Now we both know better than that because we did a lot of work on this radio, but um, you know you you, you kind of get the idea. I uh, I put a fuse in the holder as you can see. All right, there's one in there. Uh, one thing I did do too that you didn't see yet was I installed a cord. Now the original cord on this radio would have had the uh, ballast, the line ballast, you know, um, built into the cord. And um, that would have, uh, Don from Restore Old Radios pointed out on, his, on one of his radios that he did that, uh, I think it was the Majestic International, that it would have had a really thick cord because of the ballast that's in there. Now I didn't have any thick cord like that, but what I could do is take some of my nice um, reproduction cloth cord and at least make it look as close to that as possible. And as you can see, I have installed a vintage plug on here. So we've got about uh, five feet of, of line cord, which is about right for radio like this. The antenna course is on here. Real quick, let me show you underneath being real gentle with this guy. So I did mount the antenna, ran it through this rivet, like, like when we were taking it apart, like I showed you when we were taking it apart. And then I, uh, I came over here and I secured it where that, that strange little bit of shielding was and all soldered to death. I made a couple loops of bare wire and soldered that as a way to secure this. Now, uh, a couple folks suggested that that might have been a gimmick uh, a, a small capacitance for that antenna line. It may be. So if I have to go ahead and put something back there because I'm having trouble trimming this thing up, that's fine. I'll do that. I suspect it was a convenient way to install it, to, to put a, a, you know, a way to secure this antenna line. As you know, as we talked about earlier in the video that I did get recorded, uh, I had a problem down here in this uh, IF transformer because um, there is a resistor built into this thing that's supposed to be 250k and uh, it was reading about 354k which is way too high it's it's too far out of tolerance to accept but when i started to take this apart it was becoming it was becoming bad fast so what i opted to do instead was uh, to to calculate what resistance i would need to put in parallel with that resistor because here are the two terminals that resistor goes across this terminal here and this terminal here. So I calculated the resistance and you saw that and I came up with uh, the closest I could come to to what I needed was 820k and I'll be darned when this was all when this was installed the parallel resistance is 248 point something k so pretty doggone close. So um, I think this is going to work fine for a very long time. Um, everything else is done, all the capacitors are in place, all the wiring's in place, everything is good to go. So what we're going to do now is do an initial power up. Because this is transformerless, we cannot fire it up uh, while leaving the rectifier tube out. Um, you know how I usually do to make sure that everything else is good. Um, I, I remove the high voltage by taking the rectifier out. 
and I fire it up to make sure that the tube filament's light and so forth, that won't work on a transformerless radio because the tube filaments, including the rectifier, are all in series. All right, so we uh, definitely have to have the rectifier in to do this radio, which means I'll have to be very careful and watch the current as I turn the voltage up. I forgot to mention I, I repaired the, uh, the light bulb wires. Okay, they're, they're good. And one more thing I'll mention before we fire it up. Um, I did put... I did put a line voltage, I'm sorry, I did put a substitute for the ballast resistor right here. This 120 ohm 50 watt resistor is a sub for the ballast. So we are going to go ahead and uh, plug this baby into the Variac. Okay, it's in the Variac. Let me turn on my isolation transformer. It'll probably kick my lights out. Nope, not this time. I've got a weak breaker that I've got to fix because the surge current from the, my isolation transformer will kick out my breaker. I'm not going to unravel this wire, so my reception is probably going to be somewhat limited. If I stretch this wire out, it would probably be better. But right now, I, I don't know what it's going to do. It's going to have any reception at all. Let's turn on my Variac. The, you know the noisy Variac. Let's turn this puppy on. I just made this little wooden knob here. This little wooden... this. Uh, knob here I made on my 3D printer with some wood PLA. It's loose because I haven't really secured a, uh, the bushing in it firmly yet, but uh, it's, it's, it's a good knob to use for right now. It's not going to be the knob that goes on this radio anyway. Let's turn the power on. Okay guys, I have no idea what to expect. Okay guys, I want you to uh, keep an eye on the Variac. I will, uh, I will adjust the voltage, okay? And you keep your eyes on the current because that's what we're going to be worried about. With the rectifier in place, uh, we're going to have high voltage um, right, you know, right away. The high voltage is going to be available for the radio as this thing comes up in power. So what we'll do is we'll probably get around, around 60 volts or so and you'll see the current suddenly start to come up a little bit as the rectifier starts to conduct. Uh, in any event... Um, I, I don't know what we're going to see in terms of, that's if everything's working. I don't know what we're going to see in terms of sound. We get up to around 90 volts. If it's working right, we'll start to hear something out of the speaker. So I don't know what it's going to be. But let's, uh, let's go ahead with this. All right, I think we're ready for launch, guys. Let's go ahead and turn on the Variac. All right. The radio is turned on and turned all the way up. Okay, here we go. Remember... You watch the current, I'll watch the voltage, and, and we'll, we'll see what happens. Now, the first thing I hope to see are some light bulbs here. So let's, uh, let's, let's bump this up a little bit. Actually, I know I'm, I, sound, I look like I'm stalling, guys, and maybe I am, but I want a knob. This is a transformerless set, and I learned a long time ago to be a little more cautious with those. So I'm going to go ahead and put a knob on the tuning as well. If I'm lucky enough to get something good, I'll be able to, and I can tune it. Well, I want to have a knob to do that. All right, so here we go. Turn up the Variac. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. I got to I got to kind of soak in those uh, new electrolytics, okay? Look at that. Hey, there's something cool right right away. We got we got voltage on the lamps. That's a good thing. That also tells me that that candom that was feeding the lamps was good just like I thought. All right, 45 volts. So far, so good. I won't see tube filaments for a bit yet. 60 volts, all right. The current should start to climb here shortly. 70 volts. 80 volts. Let's let it sit there for a second. And knob looks pretty good, doesn't it? That's a... Uh, like I said, that's a wood PLA knob that I put together, uh, that I made on my... Uh, first, I scanned a Majestic... That's, that's a copy of a knob off of a Majestic Model 72. So first, I scanned it. And then, uh, and then I, I was able to print it. Hey, check it out. I got sound right now. And the current climbed a bit, so I got sound out of the radio. Let's go up to 90 volts. Let's tune around a bit. Check that out. All right. Let us. All right. Check it out, man. That sounds good, too. Yeah. 
Wow. All right, so now check it out, guys. Let me put it up to 117 volts. There we go. That's full juice now. It's coming in well. $60,000, job, and it's really, that's only going to be a couple hundred dollars a month. Hooking up that antenna helps. It's not. Done. Okay, let's take it off of my noisy Variac now, because that uh, about drive me crazy. And let's put it right here on the uh, outlet. Actually, we still need to be on the isolation transformer. All right, let's see how we do now. What do you mean by reflecting? So what people are going to be figuring out. Away. Here we go. Today, Utah Community Credit Union, inspiring smart finance. Sounds good, man. This is all without alignment. I can see I forgot to try to clean out that, that volume pot. I'm going to have to do that. Back here at Sandboy Steve in Las Vegas. Oh, for God's sakes, I'm tired of sports. I hate sports. I think uh, this is a successful test, guys. Let's go ahead and turn her off. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful, man. Um, yeah, you know what? That uh, ballast resistor is not that hot. I can hold my finger against it. It's a little toasty. I mean, it's not comfortable doing that, but it doesn't burn me. So that's good, man. We're in good shape. I'm real pleased with this first power-up test. Uh, next on the agenda, of course, is alignment. So... Um, we're off to the races on this. I'll be done with this thing by this weekend. Yeehaw. All right, guys, let me shut this one down and uh, we'll call it a night. So from your Western Outpost in Salt Lake City, happy as a pig in a whole pen full of doo-doo because this radio actually plays. This is Michael and that's all for now.